the last couple of years. Oh, there's no question. They need Middleton and Bledsoe to get going. I mean, if you think about Boston with Tatum, Kimball Walker, Jalen Brown, if you think about Toronto with Van Vliet, Lowry, and Siakam, you know, you can't do it with one guy. You need these guys going, and I like it. Middleton playing well, being aggressive. They need all of this from him. Middleton, 10 points, 4 of 8 from the field, 48 coughs it up. Williams ahead of the field to Matthews. Matthews left open, fires and buries it. Everything working for the Bucks. Well, the Bucks defense is the impetus for all of this, and the Magic's offense are getting them in trouble. You've got to be more efficient at this end. Take care of the ball, get good shots, get back and get your defense set. That's how you give yourself a chance to stay in this game. Vucevic, mid-range jumper, short. Eight straight points for Milwaukee. And now look at it, the other end of the floor. Oh, Marvin Williams and Ennis have to be separated. And Ennis, I believe, threw a punch. And if he did, he's gone. Wow, this is two guys that you rarely see in something like this. You know, mm. there's guys you expect. I didn't see what precipitated this, but these are not two guys you would expect to be in this. We'll have to go back to take a look at where this developed, but a wild sequence. James Ennis and Marvin Williams, bottom of your picture, fighting for the rebound. You saw Williams take the shove and then step in, and that was what got under Ennis' skin. And right there, Stan, we'll see how the officials deem that. Was he flailing his arms to create space and get Williams off of him, or was that a punch? Mm. I don't think it was a punch. I think that Darvin Ham getting in there ended up slipping more than anything. You know, one rule of thumb is never guy. We have a double foul. Never the guard the, in, grab a guy on the other team. To determine if there's a potential hostile act. All right, so you heard the officials at the table. They will take an extensive look at this here. Right now, the play is under review to determine if there was a hostile act on the south of the play. As they look for a hostile act, you know, me as a coach, I think, I would think if I'm Steve Clifford that what Giannis is doing today to me is a hostile act. Coming out and playing <laughs> like this, I consider that hostile, Spiro. I'm with you, Coach. You know, it's a different definition. I know it might not be in the rule book, <laughs> but I would like to be able to challenge as a coach and say I think he's being hostile toward my aspirations of winning this game. Mm. I've never quite thought out of it under those terms, but... I'm with you. Look at Marvin Williams drawing at Ennis. Ennis, of course, who has had such a, a crazy route, Coach, to get to this point, playing with his seventh NBA team. Steve Clifford has really enjoyed coaching him, all the grit, the strength that he has brought to this club. You actually coached him a little bit in Detroit. Yeah, I love James Ennis. Great competitor, great person, totally about the team will sacrifice, will play whatever role. Every time one of these fights happen, you always have to pay attention to the benches. Do any players leave the vicinity? It looked like the coaches did a, a terrific job. You see Budenholzer not even looking at the fray. He's looking back at his bench players to make sure everyone stayed put. Absolutely. I mean, that's something that I think everyone in the NBA has has learned it's something that every coaching staff talks about and your first reaction as a coach all the time is to turn around and make sure your players stay on the bench quite honestly a little easier in this situation here in the bubble the way they have the benches set up some of those guys would really have to make a fairly lengthy trek to get around the barrier and everything and get out on the floor that probably helped a little i didn't see anybody come off the benches i don't think we'll have a problem there I think the issue is going to be whether or not James Ennis stays in the game and whether or not they call that a punch or if he's just trying to free his arm up as right. they're grabbing him, which is what I think he was trying to do. He's certainly not trying to get his fist up anywhere near Marvin Williams' head. I hope he does not get tossed out of the game. I hate it in playoff games. We saw it 
Porzingis get ejected on a second technical the other night. Unless it's absolutely blatant or brutal, it's playoff time. Let's keep these guys on the floor. Now you saw Williams had the, the fistful of Ennis's jersey, and that's what led Ennis to flail his arms there to, to get him off of him. There's Marvin Williams. Of course, longtime NBA veteran. His season began in Charlotte. Upon review, instant replay has determined that the double fouls were correctly judged. As well, we'll have double technical fouls, and we will be ejecting both Marvin Williams as well as, yes, as James. Yep, got it, as James Enos. Okay, thank you, guys. Double. Are you good, Johnny? Well, yeah, we have a double fouls. That's personal fouls, no team fouls. And then we have double technical fouls. Both players will be ejected. We're not shooting in free throws. We're putting the ball right in bounds, 539 and 22 on the shot clock. We're good? And Milwaukee's ball. And Milwaukee's ball. Thank yep, thank you. All right, let's bring in Jason Phillips, VP of Replay Operations. Jason, take us through this. All right, Jason Phillips from the Replay Command Center. So another starter lost for Steve Clifford. Marvin Williams, key piece off the bench for Milwaukee. Stan, what do you think? Well, I mean, this disproportionately hurts the magic. I mean, we've already talked about their top three forwards are out. All Farouk Aminu, Jonathan Isaac, and Aaron Gordon. And now Ennis, who's been great defensively in this series, is out. Steve Clifford just is out of options here. 